Real quick, thank you to everyone for following and commenting on these videos. I do appreciate the feedback. I wanted to make a few statements on a recent stream referring to one Mr. Wilson's comments regarding Trinitarianism. I am a Bible-believing preacher. This is the book that I give to people. I don't give them a book like this and then a book of confession, you know, the London Baptist Confession, um, and then also the writings of the Church Fathers and, you know, the Catechism. And I only give this book to people, and I've given lots of these Bibles out over the years both in person and ship them to other countries, everything. I don't say, well, you need um, you need the Bible and these other things. So parts is what the Bible says. It's not up to me. There's this sort of thinking prevalent in perhaps American Christianity or evangelicalism, which downplays the necessity of having teachers of the Word of God. And it's expressed by Denlinger here and several other times in the stream. It's sometimes made out to be me, my Bible, and the Holy Spirit sitting under a tree by those who attack the sufficiency of God's Word. So we can wind up with two extreme errors, the necessity of an infallible tradition or teaching office, or the rejection of anything but the Holy Spirit's guiding. This idea is also part of the impetus behind a lot of modern, dynamic equivalent Bible translations. You can read the article I've linked below for more information on that. Okay, again, Trinitarians out there. God the Father is going to send God the Holy Spirit. I do that in quotations there because it's not a Bible term. All right. What is the makeup of God the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God, so all that we attribute to God substantially, He is. As to His relation to the Father and the Son, He eternally proceeds from them. I cover this in the main series, part two. A disembodied spirit, He has no body. Or is He a bird? You know, um, which the Catholics depict. I'm not trying to be insulting on purpose here, you know. Um, what is he? The Holy Spirit, what is he? Disembodied has the connotation of now being apart from the body it was once united with, so I wouldn't put it that way. The Holy Ghost is also not a dove, but he is a most pure spirit without body, parts, or passions. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Wait a second. I thought he said the Father was going to send the Holy Spirit. Why would Jesus then turn around and say, I will send him unto you? Isn't that kind of confusing if you believe in three separate persons? No, this is not confusing for Trinitarians, because we don't believe in three separate persons. We do, and should, believe in inseparable operations, that is, all of God's works ad extra, or outside God, are undivided between Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, though they are according to each's mode of subsistence. Hence the Holy Ghost, proceeding from the Father and the Son ad intra, within God, he is sent to believers by the Father and the Son ad extra. There's a recent book by Adonis Vidu which goes into detail on this. Again, do you serve a God that is more than just a body, soul, spirit? There's my question. Write it in the comments of this video if you see this. Body, soul, spirit. Is your God more than that? All the stuff here, the all infinite, almighty Jehovah God. Okay. What is his makeup? Please explain it and give the scriptures to back it up. We aren't going to play his game of citing a verse explicitly stating every belief we hold. Is our God more than a body, soul, and spirit? Yes. The true God, since he lacks those separate parts and his simple, pure being, is infinitely more than the false God Denlinger holds up. He's not made up of parts in any sense. I think to defend maybe the London Baptist Confession, I'm not very familiar with that confession of faith, and hence I would not think it was reasonable that, I'm, that I would treat it in the manner that you just mockingly characterized. Thanks. Um, again, I don't remember where the comment was. It was... Uh, Caleb Wilson or something like this. I'd have to look through my other comments. It was actually me that referenced the 1689 Confession. The comments seem garbled now. Even I have issues on my own videos with people's comments disappearing. But from what I can see, on Denlinger's April 5th, 2022 video, David Wilson made a comment citing the Athanasian Creed, and I replied to it. Denlinger commented, and I don't know if it was to him or me, but he said he didn't waste his time with papal creeds, so I told him to try a Baptist one, like the 1689, instead of his straw men. He told me that the Baptists are as wicked as the Catholics in many ways, and I replied that he's trying to be Don Quixote. 
I did come up. I did not come up with the Godhead doctrine, right? Um, the body of Christ. It was revealed to the body of Christ. A lot of Christians have always believed this. Um, I learned it. I was taught it. Um, Peter Ruckman taught the Godhead doctrine very clearly, and then messed it up by combining Trinitarian philosophy with it and trying to make the two blend. And you can't. Where are all these Christians that have believed this doctrine? What proof is there of this? We have Peter Ruckman, the Baptist origin, and those who have been influenced by him. There's Emanuel Swedenborg, who made some similar statements in his The True Christian Religion. But who are these people or groups in history that have believed this way? I think if we went through the people and groups throughout history that rejected the Trinity, Denlinger would condemn them as lost for other reasons. <laughs> 